Hey folks, Patrick McCrean here, Coach Patrick from Endurance Nation, back with another podcast episode for you and a video check-in. Be sure to check us out over at youtube.com forward slash Endurance Nation. We are gearing up for winter of 2022, and you've probably seen some blog posts and other content from us coming out on social media about what we're putting together for the season. I'm super excited about it. We have revamped our community-based approach for coaching endurance athletes which is designed now moving forward to serve groups of people moving through the season. We've always worked with individual athletes to customize our plans and resources to meet your needs. But at the same time, we do realize the collective power of the group, of the community. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. I recently wrote a blog post talking about what I call the six laws of the endurance uh, power of community, right? The power of endurance community. And I want to cover some of them for you today because it's not necessarily something that comes to mind when people are, are choosing performance when they're choosing excellence people don't say i want to be the best long jumper i can be i need a team or people don't say i want to be the best speech writer i can be i need a team but the truth is that some of the best opportunities for growth happen in environments where we share common goals and we're able to lean on one another support one another in the achievement of them so it's no surprise that you'll see from an elite athlete perspective uh the hoka one one team right putting people together chase the world record right uh we see other brands nike etc doing the same thing and we see great performances coming out in the multi-sport space as well from teams based in asia it all comes down to the ability to gather people together and that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? Where we get the sense of we all come together and collectively we are smarter, stronger, better, faster than we are forever on our own. So as you're making that decision with your journey for this upcoming season, I want you to think about that because you're thinking, do I work with this coach or that coach? Do I buy this bike or that bike? Do I you know, do this uh, half marathon or do I do this marathon? What do I do? You're making these sort of very binary decisions. But if you're opting to do all of that solo, as opposed to all of that within the context of a team, you are absolutely selling yourself short. And I can tell you that 100% with confidence. All right, so let's dive into these six laws of endurance community that are super important. The first and foremost, and this really rings true inside Endurance Nation, is collective wisdom. That together we know more than you would know if you are on your own. And not just Wi-Fi signal, who's got the best, you know, uh, 5G wireless connection or the fastest typing skills. It's more so wisdom as in earned by experience. So I can tell you about wheels because I've owned these wheels. I can tell you about shoes because I've bought and used these shoes. I can tell you about this race because I've done those races. And that is multiplied across 500 people inside the community who bring all of that energy and information to the table. And it's one click away from you as part of the team. All of that information informs our actions as a community. And collectively, year after year, this our 15th year, moves us forward to make better decisions from the start. So your starting point inside Endurance Nation is 10 steps ahead of working with someone or working in a group or working solo who has not taken those other steps, who has not learned those lessons, who's not made those adaptations and seen success or failure and adapted accordingly. And that collective wisdom is super important, not just because of what you directly want to know now, but there'll be wisdom operating on your behalf from things that you didn't even know you needed to know, but you overhear it in another conversation. You might be thinking about running with power and then you see someone drop a link to stride and someone else break down that whole stride power performance at that Boston qualifying marathon effort. And all of a sudden you walk out of that being super educated about power, running with power, you have a much better understanding of what it is you're purchasing and whether or not you want it, whether or not it works with your treadmill, how that operates, does it integrate with your watch? all before you even clicked a button, not even because you wanted to know it, because it happened to be in a place where you're having a conversation. Collective wisdom, number one. The second one, pushing your limits. This is one of the more obvious elements of having a team on your side, but is still super important. We all have arbitrary self-imposed limitations, um, and those are simply safeguards that our psyche has put in place to keep us in a position from uh, to prevent us from making mistakes, to prevent us from going too far, causing problems. Now, we're endurance athletes, so we're always going too far. Overuse injuries, what have you. There's some mistakes that we are used to making, but pushing your limits is something different. And the reason why pushing your limits within a group is fantastic is because you build relationships, you have peers, and you know that you're on the same level as Jane and Tim. And then you see Jane and Tim go do something pretty epic, and you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, I train with them all the time. If they can, if they can go from where we are to there, 
I can also go from where I am with them to where they are right now. And we can do that in a position where you can do it with confidence, work alongside people who are walking that same path and challenge yourself appropriately, meaningfully in a way that not only complements your season, but helps you advance your overall endurance fitness. This is a game, my friends, and you may be playing triathlon or ultra running or gravel cycling now. We don't know what you're going to be playing in three years, but we definitely know that we're the group of people you want to be playing that endurance game with for sure. All right. Number three, support and belief. This is really, really important. Even within the context of a single season, there are highs and lows. The peaks and valleys of an endurance season are rough. We have challenges. We have inter intersectional challenges between work. Sometimes work and training are orthogonally related. Sometimes we have problems just emotionally, right? We're drained, we're fatigued, we're run down. Sometimes there's just misfortune. Something goes wrong, bike crash, uh, car crash, uh, you know, something stolen. Life is just tough. That's what the team is for. Sometimes the most important element of having a group of people on your side, people who do the same thing you do, who get you, who understand you, who talk your language, is that they're there for you when you need them. You and else might be depressed about the fact that your Garmin file from your most recent race is corrupted, but we get it. We know it's out there. We know how frustrated you are when your Strava file doesn't show the work that you did because we've all been there, right? We know how hard it is to talk to your spouse about picking a race or planning an adventure or a camp because we've been there. All of us are here to support you in that aspect. And the idea that we're connected by endurance is really only the entry point to relationships that are more meaningful foundational even in terms of where we are. There's people on the team who've been here for all of our 15 years and continue to lead and support one another, whether they're first time members or veterans like themselves. All right, new ideas. This is one of my favorite parts about being on a team. It's challenging as a coach because back in the day, I used to control all the information. Now we live in a world where information is moving faster than ever before. There's an infinite amount of work, research, um, data coming in from all over the place. And as a result, collectively, people are making decisions at a faster pace. And we as athletes and coaches as well need to react at that same type of pace to handle the data. So we're not giving other people, say, an unfair advantage or making a continued mistake that we didn't know we were making earlier. And so that new information, the new ideas are really, really important. Now, sometimes new ideas are just born of inspiration, right? Someone just has a eureka moment and comes up with a new idea. And we've seen that happen inside the team. But more often than not, new ideas come out of a shared experience where I have something happen to me and then I see it happen to you and we see it happen to someone else. And then we figure out some way that we could solve this issue because we've realized the commonality of this. And if I can not only scratch my own itch, but do something that solves what's bothering you, we collectively will get better. And so the new ideas per piece is awesome. You know, similarly speaking from that idea, Eureka moment is also thinking about how we solve problems from a perspective. So when you show up to a problem, when you show up to buy a bicycle, if you don't have a lot of money and you're only doing one type of race, you're bringing a specific lens to that bike shop, right? But inside the team, people have bought a bike, a shop for a bike, shop for that bike, shop with your budget before. And they've had pluses and minuses with their experiences. You can lean on that and they can give you feedback and input on ideas, ask you questions to have you dive more deeply about what you know inside. They're going to ask you a question. They're not going to tell you what to do, but help you do a better job of making decisions that are going to be beneficial to you short-term and long-term as well. There may be a deal you don't know about. There may be a better bicycle shop, or they may recommend a bicycle fit based off of your past experience, right? All of those elements are super important, and you get all of those new ideas by simply being in, an ex in a relationship experience, a community where these conversations are happening and you have access to the people and we can even become your friends as well. Next bullet, number five, collective collective motivation. This is one of my favorite parts. Inside of Dirt Station, we do virtual challenges every year. We started it in earnest with the pandemic, but truth be told, we've been doing it for years before with some more solo challenges. Now we have a slate of three uh, virtual events that happen February, March, and May of each every year. Fun February, Mini March, and Ultra May. Uh, they are designed to help people inside the team challenge themselves, push their limits, but do so in a group setting for those who opt in, whether you're on the team or someone from the outside. And that collective motivation is super powerful. Um, it's amazing to see what a group of people who are committed to a specific cause or adventure can do when they put their minds to it. We have our members who are creating their own training camps. Um, we support them with resources and swag. We have our members who are coming up with ideas. They put a flag down for a race and other people will join them. I'm going to do that too. Let's go. Let's train. Let's get into it. And that collective motivation is really important because earlier, as I mentioned, you may need support. Sometimes your motivation is low. Uh, and the best way to get motivation is to give motivation. And that functionality that give and receive happens inside a community. That's in a large part at the core of the Endurance Nation engine. 
that allows us to develop relationships and form experiences that fundamentally change who we are as endurance athletes, right? Not just as humans, but as athletes as well, which is so, so important. And last but not least, this is what most athletes want when they sign up for a coach. And I get asked it all the time when I do my onboarding calls with people as well, which is accountability. Yes, Endurance Nation does com accountability. No, Endurance Nation does not do accountability by Coach Patrick looking at your training log and then calling you when you miss your swim workout. That's not accountability that you need from me. If you're fired up about your race, if you're fired up about your training, you're not going to skip those workouts. I'm happy to talk to you about it and get you on track. But we're talking about accountability in a broader sense, making changes that are, are life changing, right? Making changes to your nutrition, making changes to your recovery habits, picking the right races that fit your schedule, fit your progression, fit the, fit the lifestyle that you lead with your family, fit your finances. All of those pieces are super important. And that accountability of being able to ask those questions, do what you say you're going to do, attend those events, walk that, walk that long, long mile, all happens here inside the team because your teammates are not pushing you or pulling you, but your teammates are walking that same path. And it's a lot easier to do that when you have other people who are holding themselves accountable. In a way, the accountability in and of itself is pretty contagious. It's worth exploring for sure. So if you're curious about the team, about how we operate as a community, we train endurance athletes individually for the races, but we work together collectively across the season. I'm happy to talk to you and get you sorted out. The team opens up on October 8th of 2021 and moves all the way through October 31st. During that two-week window, you have an opportunity to sign up for our team or coach levels where most of our community work happens. If you just want a training plan from us, you can sign up for our plan level and do that as well. It's not quite the same just doing it on your own, but you do get access to our resources recorded as well as a one support call a month. And also, of course, our updated training plans. We update them every single year. You're always getting the latest and greatest from Endurance Nation as part of our commitment to our athletes and our representation of our mission, which is always moving one step forward each and every year. We hope that you join us on your journey, moving one step forward, whatever your races for 2022 may bring. It's going to be epic inside Endurance Nation, and I hope to hear from you soon. Go to endurancenation.us, and you'll be able to sign up for our newsletter where you'll get updates and invitations to join the team or if it doesn't work there, go to endurancenation.us forward slash newsletter, sign up there as well, and we'll be able to send you an invitation and get you on the team between October 18th and October 31st this year to start this journey with 500 athletes who are walking that same path. Can't wait to meet you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. This is Coach Patrick signing off. I'll see you guys next week with another podcast video.